Okay, so let's talk about um, some of your aspirations, mm -hmm. um, where you plan to go with your platform. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is to be able to be in a position where um, I can create high quality, high quality content in any avenue um, without the need for another party. So that's like my main thing. And as you can see, if you see any of my videos, it's like ownership is like a thing that I really preach, especially as like young black people. Um, you want to make sure that you own things because then you're able to kind of determine what you're able to do with it. Um, so I just want to be able to have an assembly line of like equipment or people that allows us to, you know, me and the, the people who line up with Royce and Empire, Empire Entertainment to, you know, have high quality content or the best quality content um, without the need for anybody else, mm -hmm. right? So, and the thing about it now is like you're in a situation where you have the ability to do that um, a lot easier. Like you don't have to go to somebody else or sign your soul away to be the person you want to be. You can genuinely start from the ground up and do that. So that's my biggest goal. Um, and that's what we're working towards every day. So trying to make your black voice matter. Right, making your black voice matter. For sure, it's a very important thing. And and like the reason why I'm saying black voice too, cause not to say that like other races aren't important, but I want to make sure that black people know that your voice and your opinion do matter and it's very important. And I think a lot of people feel as though like they might be too young or they might be too like, um, too much of a novice on a certain topic that they don't want to weigh in. Like, no, like say your mind, say your piece. Like, I, like you could be the person that changes a lot of people's hearts or changes a lot of people's mind concerning a topic that you really care about. So it does matter regardless of your age, um, and especially if you're black, make sure you speak up. Mm -hmm. So was there like, Um, I think that's kind of just always been my personality and um, I wouldn't necessarily say that anything specific happened that made me say, you know what, I want to touch base on this topic. Um, to be completely honest, uh, what happens is, I mean, for me, is like, I, I, I kind of figure out like, how can I serve the public or how can I like better people around me? And I know two things that are in the black community that people don't really have is like a financial situation that's super legitimized because obviously we've been being on um, black bottom red line and then a situation where we have access to a lot of education too so being that that's the case i said you know what as opposed to just entertaining people and making a lot of money for myself like how can we make other people you know successful in their own right so that's kind of like my part in that um so for this segment, we focus on um, two of your videos, your concise commentary, mm -hmm. sexual consent, and false allegations. Okay. So, talk about, can you talk about um, what it means to you to see a bunch of different stories in the news, mm -hmm. even recently, not even going back to like Emmett Till. Right. And, you know, when they see us, those poor right. boys. Right. So, talk about like, how does that really make you? So, um, if you haven't seen the video, I definitely um, want you guys to watch it. Not even in the sense to get my numbers up or anything like that, because when it comes to views, I really don't care. But just to understand my perspective, I'll give a quick little background. When it comes to like false allegations, what I say is, and what a lot of people don't agree with is, I don't feel as though people who agree, I mean, who uh, allege that somebody did a problem should be um, persecuted. And the reason why I say that is because of uh, two different scenarios. Now, side note, when it comes to Emmett Till, um, that was more than a false allegation. That was an excuse for murder, right? That was a situation where <clears throat> they saw a little black boy from Chicago, he, and he was in a situation where he was like, you know what? I'm from up north. This is how we kind of do things. Down south, they're like, listen, this is how we do things. Mm -hmm. And they decided to execute atrocities on a kid. Um, what I'm trying to say when it comes to false allegations is in the current day and time with parties that aren't as egregious in their mild intent. So, for example, if a woman was to say, listen, um, this man exerted force on me and I did not consent. And they allege that this person actually um, uh, raped somebody or um, had some 
some type of ill nature towards them. And it comes to be proven that that wasn't the case. The reason why I think it's problematic if you would then tell that person that they are now liable for accusing is because even though that person is wrong and they should have some type of penalty, you're in a situation where you could potentially set a precedent that allow, I mean, that prohibits girls or other victims from coming forward because they may be in a situation where they're like, I don't know if I'm gonna win this case, there might not be enough evidence, and if I lose, now I'm getting charged on top of that with a criminal case. So it's like, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people who are like me, who are young and successful, um, even like much more successful early on in their careers, like 18, 19 years old, and just got a big contract, you got a random girl saying, look, he did this, 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 and this, they lose their contracts, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, like that girl should be going to jail. And I like, yo, I definitely empathize with you, but I rather her not go to jail than a girl who actually was a victim, wasn't able to prove it in court, and then somebody else sue on top of that, and then she go to jail. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I say, like, when it comes to false allegations, not like the the alleged. Not the alleged person, but the person alleging of the crime um, shouldn't be um, persecuted. But on the flip side of that, I don't think that um, like big brands, etc., should be you know able to pull endorsements and do stuff like that without an actual guilty verdict as well. Because you're in a situation where you're 19, you're about to go to the NFL. A girl told you that. I mean, a girl told the school that she was um, sexually assaulted. It wasn't true, and now no NFL teams want to rock with you. You got to get a nine to five job, and that's like damaging for your dreams. And I don't feel like that's fair, and I feel as though um, that needs to be changed as well. So there's two two sides of that coin. That coin. Um, when it comes to sexual consent, I know that was a lot of going to answer, but <laughs> when it comes to sexual consent, um, my biggest thing is you know, listen, people. Who are my biggest thing about that topic was when it came to the being under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Now, if you're in a situation where you knowingly took a, a, took drugs or alcohol, that's not the same as being drugged, right? Like if somebody drugged you, that immediately is a crime in and of itself. But if you were like, you know what, I'm gonna um, partake in some illegal drugs or I'm gonna be an alcohol or whatever because that's like how you feel or what you want to do for that night, that's on you. But you are still liable for your actions, right? Um, and that is what I'm saying for men and women. However, what I really want to say is when it comes to men, you guys can't say, like, listen, I was drunk, so I can't be the aggressor. Like, I can blame it on the fact that I was drunk because they're saying that the women can't give consent. But you have to also realize, like I said in the segment, that men are much more likely to be the uh, abuser when they're drunk. And a girl has a lot, I mean, a female has a lot less ability to protect herself when she's drunk. So you should not be able to then say a woman could immediately give 100% consent when she's drunk because she could be actually, you know, saying that she isn't. But the flip side of that is if you are two consenting adults, if you're under the influence, at that point in time, you guys decided that that's what you wanted to do and that's completely fine. After the fact, after one of you guys sobered up, you cannot then say, okay, I was under the influence, I wanna like retake, tell me, take back my consent. Because then that could be problematic. Um, that kind of leaves everything open to something being a crime, when in actuality, it was a night of passion between two people who were just under the influence. So, um, yeah, those are my two major things that I feel like people really need to kind of put more of a keen eye into, mm -hmm. because much more than anything else, any type of sexually involved crime has a connotation, which is just, but it has a connotation that could really just like linger forever. And you don't ever wanna be in a situation where you're accused of things like that um, and convicted of things like that. When in actuality, you weren't a really bad guy or a bad woman. So in our community, in the black community, a lot of times we're told to just sweep things under the rug or right. hush, we don't ask any questions. How do you feel like you're definitely shining a light on these topics, so I mm -hmm. feel like you're maybe impacting our community, opening our eyes, making feel, making us feel like we can express ourselves. Um, I think the biggest thing that you can do um, is 
lead by example. So if you're in a situation where um, you're trying to implore people to implore people to do certain things and you have the ability to complete that action yourself, you definitely should. Um, I can't tell kids that are 11, 12, 13 years old to speak out about topics that they, they're really interested in, whether it be dinosaurs or basketball. I can't tell them to like really express themselves the way that they really want to if I don't say, listen, like I've been expressing myself the way that I wanted to as well. So um, I'm trying to lead by example to show, and then um, my dad is, and my mom are very um, big in when it comes to speaking and they're a little bit more on the spiritual side, but they have always said to speak your mind and make sure that you're in a situation where you're able to you know, voice your opinion and let yourself be heard. So I definitely want to make sure that um, it's permeated through how I do things as well as kids growing up. They definitely need to make sure that they know that. And yeah, listen, if you're listening to music and you're talking about like snitching and things like that, um, on that note, that is a very isolated situation. It's a very isolated situation. It's a very isolated group of individuals. If you're not among that type of lifestyle, um, and you're not in a situation in which that's how you feed your family, um, and um, that street life is what you're really in, um, don't let a song or these rappers or any type of people online uh, convince you that you shouldn't be following the law. <laughs> like, just let's, let's be completely honest. A lot of the people who are actually voicing those opinions um, actually don't live by that so yeah. voice what you need to voice say what you got to say um, and unless like if you're really in that type of lifestyle then hey do what you got to do but for the kids growing up like make sure that you protect the people around you it's not snitching when you're in a situation where you're um, protecting yourself or your kids or your family and then since we are in the NAACP mm -hmm. um, youth do you have any encouraging words and advice for some of the younger people that are growing up um, and wanting to speak on certain things that are kind of being shut down by the older generation? Oh, for sure. Um, I'll look it directly in the camera and tell you guys, you can literally do anything. Like, there's not, and when I say anything, I don't mean like, oh, you can do anything. I mean genuinely just anything that you think that you can do, whether it seems like um, fake or non-existent. You could find a way to make it a reality and actually do it, like genuinely anything. Whether it's going to be easier or hard, it's kind of dependent upon the action that you want to commit. But if older people are shutting you down, it's more than likely because you know they didn't grow up with the same experiences that you've had. Um, but listen, when it comes to like having a conversation um, about things that you're interested in, do that. If it comes to like making music and you want to be the biggest artist ever, you can do that as well. I mean, it's not going to be easy, but whether you're young or old, um, as long as you're a human being and you have some sense of confidence, you can do anything. Especially with God, too. You can really do anything with God. So, just wanted to make sure you guys knew that. Okay, thank you for sitting with us and talking. Mm -hmm. and, um, um, okay, okay, cool. Um, for flux, um, so this is a hoodie that I got from my boy, it's a really talented designer, um, bfto.club. Make sure you guys look that up. Um, I have you know a lot of content on the way, a lot of artistry um, coming the platform. As you can see, it's Royce Empire, Royce Entertainment. I'm about to have. And um, I'm not really the best with plugs because I want people to see it naturally. But listen, at the end of the day, if you want to see the greatest content of <laughs> all time, <laughs> just stay tuned and um, yeah, it'll be coming your way. Great, thanks. Perfect. <laughs> and cut. <laughs>